Welcome back, Anthology Enthusiasts. My name is Coach, and on this episode of Card Anthology, we'll be taking a look back at the second installment of the Mercadian block. This expansion was released just months after the first set Mercadian Mask, and would finish off the block with the expansion set called Prophecy. This block overall was much weaker than the previous Urza block, but still produced some noteworthy cards. So, here's the start to the episode over the expansion set called Nemesis. Nemesis was released on February 14th of 2000. It was the second expansion and the first small set of the Mercadian block, and was considered by many at the time to be the most powerful expansion of the block. The symbol of the set was the Axe of Krovax, with Krovax being the main antagonist of this storyline. Mike Elliott would be the lead designer and developer of the set, with Bill Rose and Mark Rosewater being a part of the design team, Charlie Cantina, Paul Peterson, and T. Wood Woodruff would be a part of the development team, with Dana Knudsen and Ron Spears returning as the art directors for this set. The Nemesis expansion had a total of 143 cards, which included 55 commons, 44 uncommons, and 44 rares. It was sold in 15 card booster packs, with the artwork of the packs being Sliptide Serpent. The four pre-constructed decks that complemented the expansion were the Blue and Green Breakdown deck, the Red and White Eruption deck, the Black and Green Replicator deck, and the Mono Black Mercenaries deck. The pre-release card for this expansion was a full Arathi Assassin, and the expansion also released a novel of the same name. Nemesis, as far as mechanics and themes, stayed the same from Mercadian Mask. The only new addition in this area was the keyed word Fading. Fading would only be seen in this expansion set out of the block. A creature would enter the battlefield with a certain amount of Fade counters, with each of your upkeeps removing a Fade counter. If not, the creature had to be sacrificed. Cards that included Fading were Ancient Hydra and Sapling Burst, just to name a couple. For the storyline of Nemesis, the Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria was nearing and the only Planeswalker able to stop it was Urza. With the abandonment of Volrath's post on the Plane of Wrath, the Phyrexians chose the former Weatherlight occupant Krovax to take his place. Krovax would have to prove his loyalty and worth to claim his position. While the assertion of Krovax is occurring, the Wrath Rebels, being led by Eladomri, Lord of Leaves, are trying to break away from Phyrexian tyranny and control. There were a total of six cycles in the Nemesis set. The first cycle were the common spell shapers, which were 1-1 creatures with a pay mana, tap, discard card effect. The spell shapers were Nether and Doll, Trickster Mage, Plague Witch, Bola Warrior, and Harvest Mage. The next cycle were the Lakolas, which were creatures that if they became blocked, they may deal damage to a creature during the blocking set, but no damage during the actual combat. This is essentially dealing damage before first strike and included the cards Lakolith Whelp, Lakolith Warrior, and Lakolith Titan. The third cycle were the free spells, which were spells that you could use without paying mana if your opponent controlled a certain land. The free spells were Sivvy's Ruse, Submerge, Massacre, Mock Salvage, and Refreshing Rain. You had the Calling Creatures, which allowed you to search for cards with the same name as a creature you controlled. The cards included Skystroud Sentinel, Nesting Worm, and Pack Hunt. These cards also worked well with Howling Wolf from Arcadian Mask. The last cycle were the seals, which were common enchantments that could be sacrificed to mimic the effect of a certain common instant. There was the white card seal of cleansing to destroy an artifact or enchantment, the blue card seal of removal to return a creature back to its owner's hand, the black card seal of doom to destroy a target non-black creature, the red card seal of fire to deal two damage to target creature or player, and the green card seal of strength to give a target creature plus three plus three. There were also two Mega Mega Cycles, or cycles that contain cards across multiple sets and blocks. There was the card Core Haven that came out of this set and was the fourth card of the Legendary Land Mega Mega Cycle, with the other cards being Teferi's Isle, Valorize Stronghold, Yavi Maya Hollow, along with Keldon Necropolis being released later on. The other Mega Mega Cycle were the Voices, with the Voice of Truth being the last of the cycle. These were white, uncommon angels that had a different color protection. The other cards that accompanied this set were Voice of Grace and Voice of Law from the Urza Saga set, and Voice of Duty along with Voice of Reason from Urza's Destiny. There were three total pairs included in the set, the first set being the 2-2 Core Rebels, such as Lawbringer and Lightbringer. These cards could be sacrificed to exile a red or black creature depending on which rebel it was. The next pair were the cards Rackling and Bisling, which were a 2-2 artifact creatures that dealt damage depending on the amount of cards an opponent had and echoed the old school artifacts The Rack and Black Vise. 
The last pair were spell shaper creatures, such as stronghold biologists and stronghold machinists, which countered certain types of spells. Stronghold biologists countered creature spells, while stronghold machinists countered non-creature spells. With the case of reprints, there was only one functional reprint out of this set. That functional reprint was called Spineless Thug, which plays the same way as Croven Knight and Young Way Recruits from the Portal Block. Notable cards that came out of Nemesis were cards such as Accumulated Knowledge, which was an instant spell that would let you draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of Accumulated Knowledges in all graveyards. This was a 4 copy main board card for the semi final Nethergo deck played by Antoine Ruel in the 2000 Worlds competition held in Toronto. Blastoderm was a 5 5 green creature with the keyword Shroud and Fading 3. This card was used in many fire decks in the Pro Tours and Worlds of the early 2000s. It was mainly popular because it was a big creature with a low mana cost for its power and toughest stats. Lin Civi Defiant Hero was a 1 3 rebel card that could recruit other rebels of X mana cost. It could also pay 3 mana and bring a rebel back from the graveyard to the bottom of the library. This card was most famously used in the standard rebels deck in Pro Tour Chicago that was played by Kai Buddy. Daze was a blue instant spell that stated that you may return an island you control instead of paying Daze's mana cost. This countered a target spell unless the card controller paid 1 generic mana. This was used effectively in early game control strategies but was only seen in a couple of top 8 professional decks at the time. Parallax Wave was a white enchantment with Fading 5 and had the effect of removing a fade counter to exile a creature until this card was gone. This card was also included in the Rebels deck previously mentioned along with a couple of other standard professional decks at the time. And finally, there was the card Tanglewire, which had Fading 4 and at each player's upkeep, that player had to tap an untapped artifact or creature he or she controlled for each fade counter that was on Tanglewire. This card was featured in three of the top eight decks of the 2000 Worlds competition in Brussels, including both the first place and second place deck. A sealed booster box of Nemesis is worth around $225. So that is all you need to know about the Nemesis expansion set. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Card Anthology, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button along with tapping that subscribe button. Make sure you also follow us on the Twitter and the MTG Amino app to see what we'll be up to next on the channel. Be sure to check out our buddy Niza over at Niza Hone Magic this coming Friday as he'll be doing a top 10 over the best Nemesis cards, so make sure you watch that soon. Our next episode will be over the last set of the Bricadia block called Prophecy, so be on the lookout for that episode soon. This is Coach signing out and we will see you guys next time.